Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to review Pythagorean Theorem and introduce you to the three primary trigonometric ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent. Uh, this is the first lesson of trigonometry. So first of all, a uh, reminder about Pythagorean Theorem. You guys remember this hopefully from middle school, but Pythagorean Theorem only works for 90 degree triangles. Also called right angle triangles, of course. So the first part of this, a right angle triangle, we need to know which side in the right angle triangle is the hypotenuse. Across from the right angle is the longest side of the triangle, and the longest side of the triangle is called the hypotenuse. And for Pythagorean theorem, this is always going to be side C. And the other two sides, it doesn't matter how you label them, they're generally called A and B. And the order of them doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter what you label them with. But the important part is that you have c squared is a squared plus b squared. This means that your longest side, c squared, is going to be the sum of the two other short sides. The other form of this equation, though, goes like this. If you're trying to find a short side squared, what you essentially need to do is you need to do your long side squared minus your other short side squared. And this hopefully makes sense. Your longest side is C, and you're going to need to subtract from your longest side in order to get a smaller value. And since B is a shorter side than C, always, because the hypotenuse is the longest side of the triangle, you're going to need to subtract from C squared to get a smaller number. Now, how do we actually use Pythagorean theorem to solve for missing lengths? The way we do it is we just quickly look at this and figure out which side is our hypotenuse. So, in this first example here, uh, we're trying to find solve. Uh, we're trying to find side x, and x is the long side, the hypotenuse of the triangle. So, x squared is going to be a short side squared plus the other short side squared. Now again, it doesn't matter what order you do these two, right? I could have done 5 squared first and 4.3 squared second. But the two short sides need to be added together and squared. So x squared is going to be, uh, if you square this and square this and add it together, uh, it's about 43.49 if you round correctly. And the key step for the Pythagorean theorem is that Roughly speaking, the opposite of squaring is square rooting. So we're going to square root both sides. Right, the reason for this, if you have like x plus 3 equals 7, how do you get rid of the plus 3? Well, you do the opposite of plus 3, which is minus 3. You do minus 3 to both sides. So essentially, the opposite of squaring is kind of like square rooting. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but for our purposes, that's good enough. And uh, if you work this out, x then is 6.6. .6. And there's no units in either of these questions, so we leave no units here. That is your final answer. 6.6. .6. Now this one here. The longest side of the hypotenuse in this case is 15.8, which means we are in this question trying to find a short side. So we're going to set it up the same. x squared equals the other two sides squared, 15.8 squared and 6.9 squared. But the big difference for this one is we need to subtract. And that's because we need to get a smaller number to get a short side. So working forwards, uh, that means that x squared, if you um, square that and subtract and put it in your calculator, uh, your calculator will tell you it is... Uh, 202.03, if you round correctly. And again, our last step of Pythagorean theorem is always going to be to square root, which finally gives us x is 14.2, and again, there's no units in this question. All right, so that's Pythagorean theorem. Um, next thing we're going to need, if we're going to use, if we're going to solve triangles, uh, just another quick review, is the sum of angles in a triangle. Um, in any triangle, doesn't matter what shape it is. It could be an obtuse triangle. It could be a right angle triangle. In any triangle, 
Oh, why is my there we go. In any triangle, there are always going to be three angles. I'll just label them A, B, and C. And angle A, that's the uh, this fancy thing right here is the angle symbol, by the way. Angle A plus angle B plus angle C is 180 degrees. Uh, just to note about this angle symbol, um, we often just skip that. So a lot of the people, a lot of students would just write this, and teachers for that matter, would just write A plus B plus C equals 180. Um, and that's fine too. So let's uh, go through how to do this. The easiest way to do this is actually to work backwards. You've got a total of 180 degrees, right? The sum of the angles in your triangle are 180 degrees. So let's subtract the two angles we know. I know that's 70 degrees, and I know that's 40 degrees. So that's using up 70 and using up 40 of our degrees, essentially. And that leaves us with what's left. Well, 180 minus 70 minus 40 is 70 degrees. And that's our missing angle right there. This one here, same idea. I'd encourage you at this point to pause the video and try it yourself. OK, we're back. The magic of pausing videos, it's simple as that. OK, so hopefully you did this. Minus 76 degrees, minus 61 degrees. And if you subtracted those correctly, you should have got 43 degrees. 43 degrees. Cool. This brings us to the three primary trigonometric ratios. So let's start with the diagram of a triangle. Actually, we're going to do a couple of diagrams. We'll do a diagram like this. And we'll do a diagram like this. OK, so we're going to label this A, B, and C. And we'll label this one same triangle, A, B, and C. Now, let's just quickly go through what these three different words mean and what they're going to mean for our triangles. Opposite means across the triangle. Adjacent means uh, beside. So if someone's adjacent to you, it literally means they are beside you. And the hypotenuse is across from the 90 degrees. It's the biggest side. So uh, this is our hypotenuse. Usually we'll just write HYP or even just capital H. Um, oops because we're going to do this quite a bit. Now, the idea of the opposite and the adjacent, what really makes a difference for labeling these is which angle you care about. There are two possible angles you can care about in a triangle. So a right angle triangle always has 90 degrees in it. We know it's 90 degrees, we don't really care about that one. You're either going to know your angle A or you're going to be trying to find your angle A, or you're going to know your other angle, your other acute angle B. Now, from this A, that side is the opposite. That side is across the triangle from angle A. But on this triangle, it's the same triangle, but if we care about angle B, then the opposite from angle B is actually down here. And we can label that with O. And then the last side left then is next to the angle we care about. And of course, next to means adjacent. So this side down, down here is your adjacent, or for B, this side right next to it is the adjacent. Now, pro tip when you're doing this, always label your hypotenuse first, because the adjacent can get very confusing. If you haven't labeled your opposite, a lot of students, I'm going to do this uh, in brown because it's incorrect. This is wrong. But a lot of students think, oh, this side's adjacent. But it's not adjacent because it's already the hypotenuse. So this is not the adjacent side. Your adjacent side can never be your hypotenuse, never the side that's across from your right angle. OK, I'm going to erase all that so we don't confuse anyone. But it is wrong to label the hypotenuse the adjacent side. It's one of the most common mistakes in this unit. 
Okay, so this brings us to the sine ratio. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys the standard way of teaching this in Math 10C. I'm also gonna post a video later this week for what I'm gonna call the Math 20-1 way of doing this. So for those of you who wanna go into Math 20-1, I strongly encourage you to watch that video later, which is a different way of thinking about this. Um, but since we're doing distance learning, I'm gonna teach this the standard 10C way. And that is using something called so ka toa. So the idea of this is we can define the sine of an angle. Now we want to pause right here. This is an angle. You can never have sine on its own. Okay, just like a hanging sign on its own is kind of like a hanging squared on its own or a hanging square root on its own. You always need to be squaring something. You always need to be square rooting something. You always need to be signing something. And the thing that you sign is always an angle. So the sign of an angle is going to be a ratio, a fraction of two different sides. And that's where the OH comes in from so katoa. O is the opposite and H is the hypotenuse. Cosine, same idea. The cosine of an angle, that's a theta by the way, that's the Greek letter theta. If you wanna be fancy, you can call it a theta. So cosine of theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And finally, we've got toa. Tangent of an angle is the opposite over the adjacent. So those buttons, so, ka, and toa, are right next to each other on your calculator. Those represent a fraction of sides in a triangle. And we're going to learn later this week, as you guys work through this first uh, unit on trigonometry, how to use sine, cosine, and tangent to solve for sides in a triangle, and how to solve for angles in a triangle. But for now, we aren't, we aren't gonna worry about solving things. Let's just get the basics down. Which sides go with which for sine, which sides go with which for cosine, and which sides go with which for tangent. Okay, so uh, this question, find the values of each trigonometric ratio uh, to the nearest 10 thousandth. So that's uh, four decimal places. <clears throat> uh, using these steps. The first step, we are going to circle the angle that we care about. So this first question here, question five, we're trying to find tangent of x. Now remember, there are two possible angles we could care about. We, 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 the, the 90 degrees we always know is gonna be 90 degrees. We could either care about this angle down here or this angle uh, up top. And in this case, it's tangent of x, so we care about this angle down here. Now we're going to look up at our definition, tangent is the opposite divided by the adjacent. So to do that, we're going to need to know which side is which. So we're going to need to label our sides. Always label the hypotenuse first. The hypotenuse is across from the right angle. So this is my right angle, so this is my hypotenuse. Now from x, the side that, I, that is opposite x is the 36. That's the O, which means that the last one left has to be our adjacent. Now our next step uh, is write the ratio. Uh, so for tangent, tangent is opposite over adjacent. And this is why we care about this, this so ka toa. So ka toa is a memory trick that turns all three of these equations, one, two, and three into one quick memory trick. So tells you that sine of your angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Ka tells you that cosine of your angle is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And toa tells you that the tangent of your angle is your opposite over your adjacent. When I teach this in class, I always say that you should really try to pronounce those H's. So, ka, toa. 
Okay, so if you're at home, I want you to like pause right now and say so ka toa with those hard H's to remind yourself that the hypotenuse is there. Don't forget about it. So ka toa. No, I'm not kidding. Like pause right now and say it. You didn't pause, did you? Well, anyway, let's move on. So this is going to be toa. So uh, just for me, I'm just going to write down toa to remind myself. So I'm going to write tangent of my angle. My angle in this case is x. And I care about the opposite and the adjacent for Toa. So this equals a fraction, always equals a fraction. Our opposite in this case is 36, and our adjacent is 27. So now we just plug this into our calculator. Uh, so if we're trying to turn this, uh, because it asks for the nearest 10,000th, we're going to plug this into our calculator and get the decimal value 1.3333. Okay, let's try the one below. Cos of x. Let's go through our steps. First step, cos of x. x is this angle here. Let's label our sides now. Across from a right angle is our hypotenuse. Across the triangle is the opposite. And right next to it, then, is the adjacent. Ka! Do you hear that, H? That's cosine. Cosine is ka, C-A-H. So we care about the adjacent and the hypotenuse. Cos of our angle, x, equals a fraction. A, adjacent, over ha, hypotenuse. And 8 divided by 10 is exactly 0 0.8. Um, and I suppose if you want, you could fill in 0, 0 zero for your 10,000th, but it's exactly 0 0.8. All right, this one, ooh, triangles are getting all twisty now, but that's okay, we can figure this out. Cos of z, we're gonna circle z. Next, we are going to label our sides, always labeling your hypotenuse first. This one up here is the hypotenuse. Across from z, now notice we're going like to the left this time because z's way over here. Uh, this then becomes our opposite. And the side that's left is our adjacent. It's ka again, C A H. So we care about our adjacent and our hypotenuse. So cos of z is a fraction, 35 over 37. And uh, I can't do that in my head, so I'm just going to check my notes here. Yep. Yeah, so uh, cos of z is 0 0.94. Five, nine. <clears throat> okay, um, hopefully you got the idea by now. Um, I'd like you to pause right now, try, uh, let's do 10 and six. Yeah, oh, I'm going out of order. Let's do, uh, do this one and this one, and then unpause and I'll show you the solutions. Okay, that should have been lots of time for you to pause. So let's do, um, let's do six first, why not? since I've done them out of order so far. Okay, so we are doing sine of z. First step, we need to circle our angle z that we care about. Then we're gonna label our hypotenuse. We're gonna label our two other sides, O and A. I'm doing this faster because you've paused the video, right? Right, you did this already? So this is so, so we care about opposite and hypotenuse. So sine of our angle is our opposite, 12, over our hypotenuse, 37. Plug that into your calculator, oops, and sine of z equals 0 0.3243. And this one down here. Tangent, okay, let's go through. We care about angle A. That's wonky, but that's okay. This is our right angle, so this is our hypotenuse, which makes our other two sides the opposite and the adjacent. Tangent is toa, so we care about the opposite over the adjacent. So tangent of our angle is our opposite four over our adjacent three, which is 1.3333. There you go. 
That's your introduction to the primary trigonometric ratios.